At Morris Bank, we understand that your personal finances and banking experiences can be stressful. We also know that it doesn't have to be that way. That's why for over 60 years, we've dedicated ourselves to providing common sense banking to people just like you. We work hard to combine the latest online mobile technology and top-notch customer service that allows us to do just that. We realize our customers have choices, but what sets us apart is the personal service that we provide that they may not receive at larger institutions. We like to make you feel at home and we like to make the process as easy as possible when you're banking with us. But we're not focused on helping just our customers. We are equally dedicated to supporting the community we are a part of. Just this year alone, we've logged thousands of community service hours and provided significant financial support to the communities we serve. We want to make sure you have the best banking experience possible. Come see us or give us a call to find out what makes Morris Bank different because we're banking on you. Welcome, everybody. I'm glad to have with me a good friend, Terry Hutchinson, which uh, I get to see quite a bit. Terry, you, you work with the recreation department and do hey, a yes, lot of I work. Do. So, uh, what's the most fun about your job? Well, uh, getting to do everything that makes the recreation uh, department work. For you know, COVID has had us shut down yeah. for quite a while, but things are seeming to be open back up for all the kids to come out and enjoy everything that the recreation department has to offer. And I know you've missed that and COVID has, uh, uh, you and I, uh, I know we can both say in our lifetimes, we've never seen anything like this. So. No, we have not. Yeah, it's changed a so. lot of things and uh, we'll be glad when, and I know the kids watching and the parents watching will be glad when everything gets back going and, and uh, we can have all the activities. And one bad thing this past summer was uh, the swimming pool wasn't open. This was the second year and last year was like a record number of people just coming in, thousands of people. Oh yes, to cope with all this, this yeah. hot Georgia weather that we have. Yeah, so. yeah, and I don't blame them, but that was terrible that we wasn't able to open it this year. But, but we're not here today to talk about the recreation department, even though I did want to talk about it just a minute because I know you love working with uh, not only with the kids, but y'all have a great staff with Brian and uh, we do and all everybody. I better not start calling names because <laughs> I won't get them all. So, uh, but just a wonderful group of people. I always enjoy coming out and doing shows out there. But uh, but uh, I joined a Facebook page here a few weeks ago uh, that you started, uh, and it's uh, basically. Uh, your forefathers yes, that it is. Uh, you put a lot of work in and the name of the Facebook page is the John King Hutchison's descendants okay tell us who John King Hutchison is John King Hutchison was the first Hutchison that came to this area in which when I say this area things were settled more from the South Carolina border mm -hmm. over towards what we now know is Emanuel, Johnson, Montgomery, mm -hmm. Lawrence, which all at one time was Montgomery County. That's right. Well, he came here in what we can figure in 1797 on a land grant, which was in Montgomery County at that time. When Emanuel County was created, he didn't move. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he just appeared then in Emanuel County, which he died in 1836 in Emanuel County. Mm -hmm. And I have been doing research on this family line since 1996. Mm -hmm. uh, my dad gave me a partial tree that had been written by the late uh, Harry Hutchison and Grable Hutchison and didn't know that, it, that I would even be interested in it. Mm -hmm. I spent eight hours in that book that day wow. just reveling at the different things that were said about the different ancestors. And I'm like most people <laughs> at that time, I knew who my grandparents were mm -hmm. and I remembered my great-grandmother Hutchison. Mm -hmm. But 
any further than that, I didn't have a clue. Well, there it was all laid out in front of me, and it was like, it just created a monster. And as it, what everybody says, uh, the rest is history. Yeah. And I've been doing it since 1996. Isn't it fun, though, when you get, uh, and I can see the excitement on your face when you started talking about it, but isn't it fun when you first, because I've been there and I've done the same thing, and you start looking back at and researching people that most of us know our grandparents, if we're fortunate enough to know our grandparents. And if we're really fortunate, we may have known our great-grandparents. But beyond that, uh, it's just impossible exactly. uh, to, to know anybody. And But yeah, that's it's just so much fun. And, and I know you weren't able to move away from that, was you? No. Uh, it's... They say you have several loves in your life. Well, history is one of mine, and family history is, you know, to bring it a little further down. Yeah. But I could talk about it for hours to anyone that will listen. Mm -hmm. And it's amazing the things that you can learn. Everybody says it was a long time ago. But the things you can learn about yourself. I often wondered where all the waves and the curls in my hair, even though you can't tell it, I've got it pulled back, right. where they came from. Yep. Well, John King Hutchison married a Patriot's daughter, Sarah Mills. The American Patriot was her father, James Mills. He fought in the American Revolution. She had red, curly hair. So... The Hutchison line has a lot of red or auburn or red tints and curls in it. Mm -hmm. Well, there you go. There's something that my ancestors of doing my research has taught me. Wow. Uh, the demeanor of Hutchison descendants, some of the facial features. Mm -hmm. uh, I know a lot of people know people that have what they call the penny skin because mm -hmm. I was told all my life it was one if you had a mm -hmm. penny or a nickel for every freckle. <laughs> <laughs> well, that comes through our Hutchison line. Good. And uh, just j I could just go on and on and on about the different features and the family lines that we connect into and that connect into mm -hmm. the Hutchisons that it's just like my daughter asked me one time, Mama, who in this area are we not connected to? I said, well, if your family has been in this area for five generations, we're kin. Yep. <laughs> yeah, well, we're really all so, kin some way. We started with Adam and Eve. I know both of us believe that. So, mm -hmm. you know, when you get down to it, we're really all kin. But when you dig down into our, uh, our family trees, we do find out. And one of the most interesting things you've said so far is seeing those genetic things with the freckles or, the, the, or whatever it might be, the curly hair, or red mm -hmm. hair, or whatever, according to what particular family it is. But those things are really cool. I want to dig down a little deeper. We've got to take a commercial break. But uh, I want to dig down a little deeper and find out uh, some more information about this. Y'all stay with us. We'll be back right after this. Stepping Stone Child Advocacy Center is a nonprofit organization serving the Dublin and Oconee Judicial Circuit. We provide confidential services to children and adults who have experienced child abuse or sexual assault. We are available 24 hours a day, seven days a week to respond to your crisis or need. When you take that step to report your abuse or assault, we will be here to help you navigate your way to hope and healing. You will be treated with kindness and respect as you receive services such as forensic interviews, medical exams, legal advocacy and support, as well as referrals to counseling. All of these services are provided to you free and confidential. What makes C21 Durden Cornegay the number one realty group in the area? First off, we sell more homes, and our team of agents works harder than any other realty brokerage. Buying or selling a home can be made easy with our professionals, so make the number one choice in your real estate agent. Century 21 Durden and Cornegay Realty. 
For more information, log on to c21dublin.com or call us at 272-1535. Welcome back, everybody. I'm continuing my conversation with Terry Hutchinson, and we're talking about uh, John King Hutchinson. And um, let me ask you, do you know what he did? What kind of occupation? As most in this period of time in our history, he was a farmer. Mm -hmm. And he came from Dublin County, North Carolina, to seek, as most did, his, his riches. Mm -hmm. And a man's worth at that time was how much land he owned, which through family lore, and I'm still in pursuit of his original land grant at the Georgia Historical Society, whatever opened up in Savannah, was he obtained 800 acres. And it sits in Adrian, Georgia now. If you turn like you're going on Highway 15, mm -hmm and you turn on the second paved road, which is North Street, and go down about a half a mile. There's a big monument on the left to him and his descendants, and his land is on the left. And it runs all the way back to the Hoopie, which I know a lot of people is oh, familiar yeah. with that. Yeah. But our family is so closely associated to that river and I swam in it as a child. Eat fish out of it. <laughs> uh, yes, and ate fish out of it as mm -hmm. well. Yeah, a lot so. of fish being caught out of the, <laughs> uh, out of the hoopy. That's what we call it, the so. old hoopy. But, uh, so 800 acres, my goodness. Yeah. And you say 800 acres around Adrian, that's pretty well all of Adrian. Pretty you know. much and all we, the... And we have to think back that time. Uh, like you said, it was all Montgomery County at the time, and then they started dividing it up, making the 159 counties that we got now. But, um, well, what about now, y'all did a lot of work. Now, there's a cemetery where he's buried, right? Yes, there is. It is called the Thomas Hutchison Cemetery, and the only way that I can determine that it got its name, when people started going around cataloging the cemeteries, he was the oldest one that was marked. Mm -hmm in the cemetery, so they named the cemetery for him. Thomas Hutchison was actually one of the sons of John King Hutchison. Mm -hmm. But this land that the cemetery sits on that is on his original land, it was said that he gave this part of the land to be a family cemetery. That him, his wife, Sarah Mills Hutchison, the son that I descend off, which died in 1839, mm -hmm. and his wife, and his third, his fourth child, Thomas Hutchinson, all are buried in this cemetery, along with other Hutchinsons, mm -hmm. which descend from him. And where's the cemetery? The cemetery is, you turn up the dirt road by the monument and go back in on that land, which is privately owned now, you have to have permission. Mm -hmm. And you go back in it about a mile, and the cemetery's back on the right. How many people are buried there, you reckon? Probably about 30 people. And are all, is everything marked well? Can you tell who all's? The ones I, that had the granite stones, right. yes, they're marked pretty well. We do have a project going right now. COVID's held it up a little bit. But uh, normally, the first people that are buried in a cemetery, they traditionally did it on a hill or a knoll. Mm -hmm. And the first people buried are usually in the place of honor at the top of the hill or the knoll. Mm -hmm. We have two indentions at the top of the crest of this little hill. Mm -hmm. And the best of my determination and what I feel in my heart, that is the final resting place of John King Hutchison and Sarah Mills Hutchison. So, so you started your research, you said 97? 96. 96. So in 1996, did you know then where the cemetery was? No, I did not. I did not know until about five years ago where it was. Uh, it took me a little bit of time because the directions were very misleading and didn't lead you directly there. Like I said, it is on private land, privately owned land. So. You have to get permission. Uh, when I did uh, gain access and find the exact location, 
the cemetery had fell in very bit bad disrepair. Mm -hmm. So this past March, we had a big group that was going to go down and do a lot of cemetery cleanup, but COVID hit and it stopped it. We did several weeks ago, a group of us go down there and we did a lot of work. Mm -hmm. The you can the road to access had the branches had grown where you couldn't get a car in. They've been cut back. The entrance was overgrown into the cemetery. It's been cut back. The gate, the cemetery is fenced in. The gate has been reinstalled. Uh, the trees that had fell, all that's been cut, clean up. All the, the brush rubs that were in it, that were overgrown, they've been cut and discarded. Mm -hmm. So, okay, did the landowner know <clears throat> that there was a cemetery on this land? Yes, he did. Okay. Uh, the, it's actually owned by two people, and uh, one of them is a Durden, and the Durdens yeah. are very much kin to the Hutchisons. They okay. married into the Hutchisons two or three different times. So they knew it was there, they just basically left it unattended and plow through it or whatever? No, it actually has a fence around it. Mm -hmm. The two people that had been taking care of it, from my understanding, in the past years was James Hutchison that owns the James Gang. Mm -hmm. His father took care of it for years and he didn't even know it. Well, wow. his daddy has since passed. We have Wayne Hutchison that is a retired Georgia State Patrolman. And from my understanding, he took care of it until his health was bad. Wow. So, and it just, it sat there for several years and nobody tended to it and it needed, it needed cleaning. <laughs> that, that's incredible though. So these people had been taking care of it through the years. And nobody knew it. And, and, and nobody, especially you didn't know it and your immediate family, I and guess. No, uh, none of us knew it. And uh, since I've created this Facebook page, which for the John King descendants. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people has found out where it's at now and want to visit and say that they have put their feet where their ancestors, their first ancestor here to Georgia came. That is remarkable. I just love family history. And um, so somebody watching us today, uh, let's try to help them out. Uh, people that maybe said, man, I need to find out about my family history, you know, and I was talking to a lady yesterday about uh, old pictures that, you know, now people take pictures on their phone, but people like us growing up, uh, most of our mom and dads and grandparents, whatever, had all these black and white pictures and uh, family members and uh, it's so much fun going through those pictures and finding out, well, who is that? Well, that's ain't Ethel or that's ain't, you know, uncle whoever. Uh, so that is a lot of fun. So let's try to help people watching us today. What would you say to people, or what would you suggest for, that people could do if they know nothing about their family history, how can they begin that task? Okay, the first thing you need to do is you need to find a grandparent that was born before 1940. The reason why I say 1940, that is the last census that we have out to the public. Mm -hmm. And you have FamilySearch.org, which is free. Now, Ancestry.com is a paid site, mm -hmm. but it calculates out to about $15 a month. And if you're an average researcher like I am, $15 a month isn't that bad. It's $99 every six months, mm -hmm. in which that's going to get you access to all the documents for the U.S. That would be all census records, wills, probates, everything. And that's what I did a lot with Family Search, but they're limited on their documents. Mm -hmm. Even though the Latter day Saints have done a great thing and digitizing a lot of our old records, but Ancestry seems to have the corner market on it. And if the library ever opens back up, there is a wonderful heritage wing in the Lawrence County yes. Library that has free Ancestry that you can be able to do your research. Okay, explain so people understand when you say find a grandparent 
that was born before. That was born before 1940. 1940. Explain what finding, because people are sitting at home saying, well, my grandparents have been dead for years, so well, explain if, that. If your grandparent was born in 1939 or your grandparent was born in 1920, mm -hmm. this would be a starting point for you. Mm -hmm. You go in. If you're younger and your grandparents were born in the 50s or 60s, then you need to try a great grandparent. If you don't know who they are, ask your parents right. and then get started. But by finding, what they do is go in and type their name in. And type, type their name right. in too. If you're using Ancestry or family, uh, mm -hmm. family Search, type their name in. If you know where they were born mm -hmm. at, that limits your search. Right. If they were born in Eastman, Georgia, you can say James Deal, Eastman, Georgia. Exactly. And, and narrow it in. And it is amazing, y'all, what you can find by doing what we're talking about here. Uh, I know when I started my research, uh, uh, I got my grandfather on my mama's side. Uh, I got his uh, where he filled out for his draft papers. Exactly. And my on my dad's side, his daddy, I found where the census people went by in 1929 is when they went by, for, I guess, for the 1930 census mm -hmm. uh, and the information he filled out. And then we were able to, uh, me and my brother and my dad took off one day because their roots were Emanuel County. Mm -hmm. And uh, we found... Uh, through a lot of hard work and a bunch of dirt roads and country <laughs> miles, and I know you 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 can feel my pain there. It yes. wasn't pain, but you know uh, your adventure. Yeah, uh, we went areas that uh, and stopped and talked to people, and uh, and people love helping. And we found this little bitty cemetery out from Garfield. I know right where. Uh, and I know you do. Uh, <laughs> but uh, where a lot of our uh, ancestors are born. And there were so many deals that were buried. And, and, and you're talking about fun, and I'll have to say this, and my dad could very easily be watching this show. He watches me a lot. But, uh, and I've, I've not said this to him, so if he's watching right now, it's probably the first time he's heard what I'm about to say. But, uh, but I had not, me or my brother, either one, had not seen him that excited in years. You know, when you, because he never knew where his grandparents were buried. Really? And when we found those graves, uh, it was uh, it was just amazing. So I encourage anybody watching. We're talking about one family here, but more importantly, we want to assist you in finding your family history because everybody needs to know. Uh, and with the internet now. Uh, it's not like it was if somebody in the 50s was looking. It'd been, no. It wouldn't have been impossible, but it would have been You'd have close to go to, to the dusty courthouses yeah. and go through all the records. I, I just couldn't imagine yeah. that type of research. But we have things right at our fingertips uh, that uh, we're sharing here today. But, uh, but it is so much fun digging in there and finding out when you see that that draft card, registering for the draft, or that census, or and seeing their signature. When I saw my grandfather on my mom's side, my grandpa Beck, when I saw his signature on there, it was just like, and he'd been dead since 1963. He came back alive. It was just, it's just, just amazing. Uh, on your World War One draft cards, you will get height, yeah. hair color, eye color, and more importantly, you were from 16 to 80 for that you had to do the World War I draft. More importantly, it gave you a correct birthday yep. for a person that was born in the 19th century, and that would be like the 1890s, the 1880s. Yep. And you would have a correct birth date on there where, when birth certificates were not invented at the time. I know. It just, and, and one thing leads to another and to another, and then... You, uh, you, then you, your grandmother, most of you listen to us now, uh, you know, you find your grandfather's information, then you get your grandma, you know her maiden name, or you find her maiden name, and, and there you go down that road, and it's just like, it's a never-ending road just about. <laughs> uh, how many people are uh, on your Facebook page? 
I currently we have a hundred and sixty five members. That's amazing. I'm calling all Hutchison's, whether you spell your name H U T C H E S O N mm -hmm. or I N S O N mm -hmm. or E N S O N. Contact me. Okay. I am still looking for the line, some of the lines of the children of John King Hutchison. Okay, and so we can put it on the screen. Give them a phone number or something. If somebody's watching us, uh, Hutchinson, Hutchinson, Hutchison, however, these different spellings, because uh, families, it changes through the years. People pick up, uh, and it, especially back then, you probably say, well, now it's not as, as prevalent, but back then things kind of evolved. But uh, if somebody's watching us now and they're a Hutchinson or their grandma was or grandpa, how can they get in touch with you by phone? You can call me at 478-353-9760. Okay. I have an email. It's Terry Hutchison, T-E-R-R-I-H-U-T-C-H-E-S-O-N at gmail.com. Okay. We've got to take another break. We're we'll going to come back and wrap things up. Stay with us. When the power's out, you're out of business. But with natural gas, with the city of Dublin, when the power's out, you can still cook on your gas stove or shower with your gas hot water heater or even fire up the grill. Plus, save money every single day because natural gas costs half the price of electricity and propane. Start saving today with the city of Dublin natural gas. Call Brad Grimes at 277-5048 and you'll never be out of business with natural gas. Portions of this program are brought to you by CurePoint Cancer Treatment, 2406 Bellevue Road in Dublin. At CurePoint Cancer Treatment, we're bringing you state-of-the-art cancer treatment right here at home. CurePoint Cancer Treatment, check us out on Facebook. Welcome back, everybody. Continuing my conversation with Terry Hutchinson, and we're talking about... Uh, John King Hutchinson and his family, and we, we've been, if you're just joining us, uh, there's a phone number on your screen, and there's an email there we're sharing with you that uh, you can get in touch with Terry on, but uh, you can also watch it, uh, this show on YouTube or on our Facebook page. So if you just join us, you missed out, we'll be airing it again, or uh, like I said, go on our uh, YouTube channel at TV35WDIG and you can pick it up and watch it in its entirety there. But, uh, uh, but Terry, you've got a Facebook page, uh, John King, K-I-N-G, Hutchinson. Uh, now, you got a reunion coming up, right? We do, March 13th, 2021. Okay. It will be at the Adrian Campground in Adrian, Georgia. If you're coming from far away, they do have accommodations. They have a hotel block of 56 rooms mm -hmm. at a very affordable rate. They have six RV spots. We will be uh, congregating that Saturday. Uh, we will be eating first. There is a $10 charge, and it's different for children. And then we're going to go over to the big hall that they have and we're going to have a little program. This will be the first ever reunion for the John King Hutchison's descendants. There has been many that have celebrated set of the lines of him, but never one as a whole. And I welcome anyone that is kin to the Hutchison's mm -hmm. or a Hutchison, come out and enjoy us in yeah. this event. Oh, yeah, and uh, even if you're way distant, you know, uh, we want to get everybody together. It don't matter uh, if, if, if most of your family's gone on uh, and your grandmother or great-grandmother was a Hutchinson or what, whatever the connection, come because there's nothing like a good family reunion, especially when you've not assembled these people before. Uh, it's even better. But uh, now tell me again his birth date and what was his, when did, what, what was the era? Okay, he was born in 1767 right. in Dublin County, North Carolina. Ooh, <laughs> that is a long, there's a lot of water under the bridge, so to speak, <laughs> uh, since then. Him, his wife, Sarah Mills Hutchison, and a brother, Lewis Hutchison. Uh, their three oldest children, which was Fairby, she married 
Grable Moody, and she helped populate Appling County with Moody's. Mm -hmm. uh, Thomas and Moses, and they, the best that we can, the way that I can tell, they came through Hutchison Island on the mm -hmm. South Carolina side, mm -hmm. so that means they came down the King's Highway, which follows the A1A. That's right. And they came down and they stopped in Wilkes County. There has been some documents there that he witnessed on, and he seemed to be a friend of a legislator with the name of Green, mm -hmm. because some of his grandchildren had the middle name Green. So, and then they moved into Montgomery County in which, like I said, he died in 1836. Sarah lived till 1855 and said to have died in her baby son's home in what would have been Adrian at the time, which wow. was Aaron Hutchison. That's a long time ago. You're talking about he was born 250, 60 years ago. Uh, so there's got to be a lot of descendants. And uh, we wanted to get the word out today. And not only that, we wanted to share information how you could research your family history. And uh, it, it's just so easy. Well, I'll put it this way. It's a lot easier than it used to be. Uh, but once you get involved, I'm going to go ahead and warn you, don't start unless you want to really get tied up in it. Because I can tell you when I started, uh, you can't stop. You just cannot stop. You just get so entrenched in it. Uh, but it is a lot of fun, and uh, you can find out about your family and your roots. But today, we want to get the word out. Uh, if you are a Hutchinson, or um, your grandparents or great-grandparents were, or, or you got a friend that was, mention it to them at work. Tell them, say, I saw this show on TV 35 about the, uh, this uh, Hutchinson man. And they've got a reunion coming up, so spread the word. Help us get the word out because it's going to be really good. Again, the, the date in March is? March 13th, 2021. 2021. It'll be here before we know it. Yes, it will. <laughs> and that's why we want to go ahead and do this show today. Uh, we got Thanksgiving right around the corner. You're going to be sitting around with family. Uh, go ahead and get the word out. And there's a lot of Hutchinson. I went to school with Hutchinson, uh, Hutchinson's. Uh, and Hutchins sons. Uh, so uh, get the word out. If you see them in town, see them around, tell them to go on YouTube, to our YouTube channel, and check out this show and uh, uh, just help us spread the word. So we've got a big reunion coming up, um, and we've been showing you some pictures along as we've talked. You've seen the cemetery and uh, different uh, pictures we've shared with you. Gives you just a little glimpse of history. But, uh, Terry, I appreciate you coming in and talking with me. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. I just, uh, I was looking forward to it. And, uh, like I said, help us get the word out. And you get out and find out more about your family history. Thank you so much for joining us today right here on TV 35. <music>